Hello everybody and welcome to a rundown of Roller Coaster Tycoon. This game has constantly given me problems as a kid. I was only able to complete a handful of the scenarios. So, my goal now, 20 years later, is to come back and destroy this game. If you'll notice, we are running uh, Open RCT2. That way I can display this game to you all in a beautiful 1080p settings and widescreen. And uh, yeah, right now a little bit about the hardware that I'm using. I am currently built a new computer rocking a i9 9600K Coffee Lake processor and a uh, RTX 3070. And I, I'm using all of that beautiful hardware to run this game that uh, was published in 99. So, uh, you know, like I said, this game has always given me problems as a kid. So we're going to come back with our educated big brains and see if we can destroy this game. And get a little bit of revenge from how much frustration it gave me. Just going down the list, we're going to start with Roller Coaster Tycoon and see what we can go from there. So without any further ado, let's begin our adventure at Forest Frontier. Forest Frontiers, sorry. Deep in the forest, build a thriving theme park in a large cleared area. Your objective to at least to have at least 250 guests in your park at the end of October year one with a park rating of at least 600. Park rating is not too bad. I believe, yeah, here's park rating down here in the bottom left corner. 600 is, uh, looks like it's about in the middle of the theoretical maximum. We have zero guests in our park, and our park is currently closed. Now, I think the first thing I want to do is decide if we want to go with free entry and be able to charge pricing on roller coaster, or if we want to do paid entry and reduce pricings on roller coasters. First of all, I'm going to pause the game and kind of explain the difference between the two as I know it. If you go with a free entry, you are able to charge your guests basically, from what I remember, at the, the you're, you're able to charge them at the excitement rating of your attraction um, versus if you charge them more and like a more of an entry fee, like you, you can't charge them as much and rides lose attraction. So what that equates to at the end of the day is a free entry fee is more of a long term goal. Like, it's, it's better in the long run. You end up making more money. Jeez, almost 500 frames per second. And um, a charged entry fee will give you that boost at the beginning by being able to charge guests as soon as they walk into your park just for eating a burger. Because, as you can see, we don't have much. We're probably going to start with a spiral slide or something stupid like that. So, let's get going, shall we? We are going to lay the foundation of what we need in order to at least maintain our guests needs here let's keep the pathing the same okay yep forget that you can't do pathing while it's paused let's extend this down a little bit and interestingly enough guests love a place to sit but they also break benches because they're thick and they eat all of my burgers um yeah let's speaking of burgers let's make a little burger shop for these folks Typically, that's one of the first things I like to do. Just who cares a buck for a burger or whatever, buck 50. I just like to get down some basic amenities for the guests. And make sure that their basic needs, food and drink and whatnot, are covered. Um, and I think there's a button where you can make sure everything is open. Yeah, yeah, that's that button. All right. Is there a way to close these windows? I'll have to get used to the UI as we go on. And great, we have a bathroom researched. Good thing we have plumbing researched. And if you want to be a terrible human being, you can also charge your guests to uh, use your bathroom. It's great. Now, another thing that you want to do at the start, look at how much money you're in debt. We've got a pretty sizable uh, loan here. Uh, let's open the park for this gentleman. And then for this, I'm going to just be doing free entry and charging uh, the excitement value for my rides to my guests. Um, let's see here. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Research. That's that's what you want to start dumping your money into. Normally, I'll do maximum funding, and I like to get to the meat and potatoes of the games, which is roller coasters. Now, if you don't have the basic needs, you're probably going to have to like you know do uh, shops and stalls as well. 
but uh, we have all the basic needs for our guests. So let's get right into researching roller coasters because the CO roller coaster is basically the way you beat the game. Right now we have the wooden roller coaster and the junior roller coaster. So let's get some basic attractions down. Let's go with the old yield scrambler here. Uh, change the isometric view here so we can see what we're doing. Typically with these guys, you don't need anything too fancy. We'll get some rid of some of these trees. Um, game was nice enough to give us a little bit of scenery here. And if you didn't know, scenery increases the uh, excitement rating for rides. Um, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this light post because it's kind of useless. Um, might make things look nicer, but at the end of the day, it ain't too crazy. We're just going to place down some padding here. And I like to do one of these numbers to kind of extend it out. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, scenery increases the excitement rating for your ride. Um, we'll just keep this at a dollar until we see the actual excitement rating. And why don't we just open this sucker up right now? Because we know it's not going to explode. It's, it's, the, it's the old scrambler. And uh, one thing that happens as you play the game, um, your rides will break down. and You need mechanics to fix them. Right now, I don't think we're in any sort of worry about that. You know, they, I think they break, you know, the random variance of, of, like, time. So over time, things will break down. The more rides you have, the more mechanics you'll need. It's raining, so let's uh, get a haunted house so guests can do something while they're in the rain. Again, same sort of uh, philosophy here where things are affected by the excitement rating by surrounding scenery. Let's just put this sucker here. We'll do an entrance here. And an exit right here. Again, getting rid of the light post because guests like places to sit more than they like light posts. Would you look at that? Beautiful. Open this sucker up here. That's down here. Yep, yep. Dollars fine for now until we figure out what we can correctly price it at. Oh, look at them flood to the haunted house because they don't want to get rained on. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. Until we get the steel roller coaster, you're doomed to a life of getting wet whenever it rains because we don't have umbrellas. Let me check just to make sure. Yep, no umbrellas. Hey, look, we're getting a roller coaster already. Now, some of the uh, best things to do in the early stage of the game is just to drop down some of these assets to get uh, like these gentle rides and these uh, thrill rides. Ooh, we got an announcement. Usually that scrolls somewhere. I did not see where that was played at. Uh, uh, uh. I don't know. We'll figure out what's happening, though. Let's see. I thought there was a little radio button somewhere. Huh. Recent messages. Nothing. Thought I heard something. Oh, well. Anyway, continuing on, usually what you want to do is you want to place down these gentle rides and thrill rides just to, like, increase the number of guests in the park. They don't really add much to your park value, but they can increase the guests. Uh, we will add ourselves a swinging ship. Uh, one of the biggest things I like to do when I play this game is try to pack things in efficiently. Um, you want a nice queue line for things, but not too long, because guests get cranky if they have to wait for too long. So I'm just going to put this here and dump this exit right here. Let's go with some pathing. There we go. Open up the swinging ship. Before we can get into actually um, building our own coaster, we could, we could attempt that actually with seven grand in the bank. We could attempt a nice wooden roller coaster. Uh, let's see. We got the scrambler. We got the ship. Want some, uh, your park has received an award for being the safest park in the country. Well, I guess if you have no rights for people to die on, it's safe. Look at that. We're already doing great. Gentle. I don't know why I can't hear anything, but I thought that was supposed to be playing music. Anyway, maybe that's because we're... Hey, do we have sound off somewhere? I'll have to check that in the um, options at a later time because I do like to play music for my roller coasters, but it sometimes gets a little hectic as well. 
a looping roller coaster is that yep that's what they call the steel coaster in uh the second game i believe so now that we got that we can change our research into a shops and stalls just in case it rains for our guests that would be nice for them but here's the the <laughs> basically the cheating roller coaster of the game is the shuttle loop it's basically one of the most efficient preset roller coasters you can make. Um, and you'll see why. It's it's basically such a short ride, and it gets you so much money for how short of a ride it is, and the excitement rating is great, and it's not very nauseous either. So, we'll find a nice suitable spot for this shuttle loop, shall we? And here's something that I like to do, too, with the shuttle loop, is... Um, Let's clear out some of these trees first. This will give us enough money to uh, successfully basically slaughter this campaign. Is you create a shuttle loop and then you quickly go into construction and you're going to make a second shuttle loop. Where is it at? There it is. But, oh yeah, that's right. You have to custom make it. Okay. Well, let's do that then, shall we? We're doing a custom design here, and we're doing this. We're gonna build basically the exact same thing as the shuttle loop, but we're going to mirror the shuttle loop, and we're going to go the opposite direction. Flatten that sucker out. And then I think it's one, two, three, four, okay. And that looks just about right. And what you wanna do is you wanna have both of these open. And you want to go with the options here. Powered launch at 40. Make sure our new roller coaster is on powered launch mode. Uh, without passing. Yes. And we want to go up to 40. Basically the same settings as the pre-constructed shuttle loop. And um, synchronized with the adjacent, adjacent station. And what that does is they will both launch at the same time. And what that does is it gives each one of them a little bit more bonus of an excitement rating. You almost get like a whole point if I remember correctly. It's pretty cool. So, uh, no entrance. Uh -huh. So let's fix that real quick. Let's build ourselves a nice little entrance for this guy. We'll do it here, a nice little exit. And then with this one, we don't have to get way too complicated. Let's build some pathing to get ourselves back there. The exit's not going to be way too complicated. We'll just do something like this. We'll sell that tile. Put the exit right there. Ah, jeez, I'm getting lost in the menus already. <laughs> Bear with me for a sec. Um, and let's do this one real quick. Entrance and exit. Just do the entrance to here, exit right there. Like I said, guests like benches. It helps them not to puke all over your park. So we're going to just throw some benches all over the place here. Uh, sometimes the shuttle loop can cause a little bit of nausea. And then we need a queue line for the entrance. So do one of these numbers. Something like so. Jeez. No. Sorry, sir, you're going to have to be lost on that tile for a second. There we go. Just a little bit more of an efficient way to pack in some a longer wait line for that ride. And let's flip around here and see if we can see what's going on this way. Let's see if that connected. It did. It did. Okay. So looks like we're all set here now with shuttle loops you really want to make sure you test them before you <laughs> before you uh start them because they do have a tendency to um kill people if they go a little bit too fast so and you'll see we just tested this one here so the results will come in and i believe you'll get an excitement rating that's a bit higher Uh, yep, 501. That's a little bit higher. And you know what's interesting, too, is can we... Four? 
must be closed first. I, you know, and that's that's another great thing is that you can see the difference between the pre-made shuttle loop is that you can add another car here. That gets you more guests on the ride, and basically it makes it uh, generate more money for you. There we go. Very simple roller coaster, but the fact that we're able to charge basically each guest five dollars per ride and a ride that lasts what like eleven seconds top is is quite is quite insane. So, without any uh, further ado on that, let's start making ourselves some money. Let's jack this up. Let's check the uh, excitement rating is four. Let's just charge them four and a half each. I could plop some scenery around to make it an even five, but shuttle loops are so efficient that you really don't, it's not necessary. Now, a lot of the campaigns that were difficult for me as a child were the ones with a steel roller coaster, or I guess they call it the looping roller coaster in this game, or they weren't available, and you'd spend the entire campaign researching roller coasters at max funding, and they were never made available until the very end, and at that point, I would just fail the campaign. Oh look, guests are just lining up for our stuff here oh boy everyone's happy now a big aspect of this game is you have to hire staff to keep your park tidy with these guys um you have to have these guys to fix things if anything breaks and then these guys make sure that uh you know the uh guests aren't breaking their benches with their overweight thickness and hey look we have the ability to give our guests a park map and umbrellas now. So we are going to go ahead and drop one of these down right about here. And open that up. The default pricing I don't really care too much about. So now when it rains, they can be happy and satisfied with our park. And then these guys are entertainers. I don't really ever build them. Build them. I don't ever really hire them. And sometimes drown them because it's sadistic humor. And I really don't know what they do. So, maybe that's something that expanded upon in the second game that I never just understood. But yeah, that's uh, entertainers are not really necessary in succeeding from my experience. But, as you can see, this thing is churning out, what, about 20 some odd guests. Yeah, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Yep, they're like 20 guests per ride at almost $5 a pop. And they're just going to keep going back in line for these rides. And that really does increase our park value here. As you can see, we've already passed the threshold of 600. We kind of just have to keep building on that and maintaining uh, a steady influx of guests. And uh, we should be able to meet our mark here for uh, Forest Frontiers. This is not too bad. It's not a very difficult campaign. Um, we're in May. Yeah, we should have enough time. We've got, a, we've got a solid amount of time left to keep maintaining that park value. Um, so let's continue with uh, just kind of getting more guests in the door to ride our money-sucking roller coasters here. The spiral slide takes up very little room and doesn't do much for your park other than bring guests in. So why don't we just chuck that somewhere over here. I like to do kind of, yeah, let's put it right in this little back corner here and have a path that's walking right out towards it. Can we actually squeeze it in further? We can. You know, maybe that's a nice spot for a merry-go-round instead. And uh, this is like the most annoying ride in the game, <laughs> is the merry-go-round. And I think you'll uh, see why as soon as it's turned on. Oh god, thank god it's not playing music. You know, I, you know, I don't know what the issue is with the music, but I'm kind of happy that it's not working, so because the merry-go-round's kind of annoying. I guess I could turn it off, but yeah. For those of you who have played this game before, it is an incessant repeating loop of music, and it's only hilarious when it breaks down because it's like, wow. <laughs> and it sounds like a, like a dying animal when it breaks down. So there's a merry-go-round entrance right there. And again, I don't really care what I charge for these. It's pretty straightforward. It's a merry-go-round. Like, enjoy it. It is what it is. Oh, look at these scenery. Look at this. We got some cool scenery, some cool stuff. I'm just thinking if we could build anything nice and cool. Um, later on, as I get more practice, maybe I'll start working on uh, the introduction of these walls and these tile assets and stuff to make things look prettier. But as for now, we're just on the first campaign. That'll come as expertise comes. 
So let's start with this little spiral slide, like we said. Let's see if we can get a... God, look at that. Preset color is already cool. We're going to put our entrance on this end here, our exit right there. Right now, we're just trying to get as many guests into the park as possible so that they can ride these. Don't really care too much about the spiral slide. Now, if you notice the way I like to America so rounds, exciting new thrilling ride, man. Um, the way I kind of like to play this game is kind of efficiently put as many things in uh, as small space as possible because one of the limiting resources for a roller coaster tycoon is the amount of property that your park owns. And if you run out of space to build stuff, then, you know, your park value will stagnate and you'll end up losing the scenario. So you want to constantly progress uh, in a very fluid motion and an upward trend. Let's add some more benches. Guests love benches. And on that note, we're going to hire ourselves a security guard to make sure that guests aren't breaking anything. So let's drop him over here. Let's make sure he's walking where the benches are. That's pretty good for him. And in the front here, since guests love to break these light posts too. They're, they're terrible. They're very terrible people. Um, when you're not watching them. I don't think we'll need that tile here. And that's one thing is the uh, the foot pathing here. It's it's way more efficient if you could just like barely skirt this like you know, if I included this area, they would start walking in a queue line, and that doesn't really help them uh, manage the security over these benches, so I just have them, like, ignore that area. And that's what that little foot padding is. I don't think that's doing anything for us either, and neither is that. So, yeah, I think we're all set with that. That should be good for now. Um, haven't needed a mechanic yet. Usually I get one as soon as a ride breaks. You know, it's just a uh, money-saving thing. I see that somebody I, uh, relocated their burger onto my cement over here, so I'm going to hire a handyman to keep my park nice and tidy, because that is an award you can get, which will also increase your park value. Right now, he's set to uh, sweep, change out the garbage cans, and water gardens. Right now, we don't really need anyone to water gardens, so we're just going to tell him to stop doing that. Um, that you can have them mow the lawn, but again, it hasn't been something that I thought was like ever necessary for this game in order for you to like achieve victory it's just you know makes your park kind of look like a golf course and kind of cool but it also costs a lot of money to have like 12 people wandering around just mowing the lawn instead of doing their job i mean i guess that is their job but you know what i mean more important stuff like i guess you might get an award if you have a very nice lawn in your park but i don't think it, it's as bad as getting the dis most disgusting award for your park for just having puke all over the place. So speaking of garbage cans, we can just throw in a couple of these here and there and uh, make sure that they're using them. We'll get rid of some of those light posts for garbage cans. Or else, you know, guests will throw their cu empty cups and garbage all over the floor if they don't have anywhere to put it. Right now, not too many of our guests are hungry or eating anything because they haven't been in our park too long. But uh, this guy over here, he's got himself something. He's, he's snacking on something. What you got there? You got yourself a burger. Uh, what you got? You've got a burger. Oh, so there's somebody that is eating. Good man. Very happy. Or I guess Lisa D. Good female. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, so... It's just generally, this is like the nature of the game here, where you kind of just keep an eye on things. Right now, we're doing pretty good. Uh, it looks like we're trying to recover some of our uh, debt that we have. And what you can do as you're recovering debt is notice that we have an interest rate here. We can start paying off our loan. We'll lose a couple thousand dollars, but we're paying off our loan. So... You know, generally a cheap strategy is just to keep building shuttle loops and then instantly pay off your loan and spend the rest of the uh, scenario um, basically just getting creative with the game. That's where the creative aspect comes from, is trying to, uh, you know, beat the scenario, but also to be able to incorporate your own roller coaster designs here. And that I like to save myself at least you know, 10 grand if I'm gonna build my own roller coaster, because I like them to be interesting and uh, expansive. 
So right now, I think I'm just going to build another shuttle loop thing here just to generate even more money. That way we can get into the more creative aspects of Roller Coaster Tycoon, which is building your own roller coasters. Let's just start by expanding the path in this way. This will free up some congestion too, because people like guests will complain if the park is too cluttered or too condensed. Even though I like it that way because I'm saving on space, they hate it because we have so many rides packed in and they feel like it's way too crowded. Let's get rid of some of these trees and let's go with another um, round of shuttle loops here. Let's see, where's that shuttle loop? There it is. Usually I like to build the standard one first, the preset one. Oh, what a disgusting color that is. Let's see. Two. I'll probably get away with it being right here. Put the entrance up here and the exit right here. And let's just build our inverted, like our mirrored shuttle loop on the other side. Custom design. We should have enough money for this. Yeah, I think it'll have way more than enough. Did I do that incorrectly? No, it's headed, it's a uh, loop. Oop. Looping to the right, and I like to have the other one loop to the left. I guess that would be the only way you can do it. You can't actually mirror it. So yeah, we just have it loop in the other direction. Have to go up, one, two, three, four. And that's basically it. It's your standard mirrored shuttle loop action. Now this will be interesting because I kind of screwed up the uh, pathing here. You'll see why in just a sec. We're going to have to delete some pathing just to make a more suitable entrance for our guests. Uh, 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 looks like we can go down this way. So let's see if we can use this tool here to properly make an entrance. And it's not going to let us do that. Oh, it is. What do you make of that? Perfect. That's how you utilize space, folks. Then we'll just do the standard placing tile here. And I'd like to do one of these numbers. And then, yeah, we can just have this be standard exit. Maybe we'll expand out this way with our pathing later. That's just what I'm thinking for now. And we want to make sure that Shuttle Loop 2 is set to... Or they're both set. Sorry, Shuttle Loop 2, Looping Roller Coaster 2. Right, right. It's set to the uh, correct launch mode, the powered launch mode, the right speed. And then we want this to have five cars. And then we want to synchronize them on launch for that extra bonus excitement rating so we can charge guests. Way too much money to ride a short roller coaster. Again, I'm just going to spitball it at 450 because we saw what the other tests came in at. They're basically identical. The only thing that would change that value is the scenery at this point. And uh, let's open these suckers up and see what happens. Just making sure we're not going to kill anybody on accident. We'll see our test results. We'll see if these are more exciting than the other shuttle loops that we're in at about 5, 5, 5, 1. We could probably get away with charging guests 5 bucks, but again, when I have food that has 50 cents tacked onto it, you might as well just charge 450. You want to get every cent out of these guest pockets. And then you want them to go home and then go grab more money and come back to your park. Let's see here. So far, it looks like we're doing pretty good. We've got money coming in left and right now. We've got people lined up for our shuttle loops. Looks like they're not complaining about the pricing or anything. We've got our small rides bringing guests in. Let's see if we have anything else we can build. We've already built the standard ones. The car ride is a little... Uh, in my book. <laughs> I've never really built the, the car ride. 
but uh, and the train is more of a transportation thing. So um, I haven't really messed with this. These are pretty cool. I've ridden these in uh, my life. You know, the interesting thing about Roller Coaster Tycoon is that I am not a roller coaster fan. Um, just, it's really not my thing. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, think they're a little bit too intense for me, but uh, I love the concept of them. Maybe if I gave them a better shot later in life, you know, I'd have a good time riding roller coasters. But uh, even when I was uh, like, like 16, 17, I tried riding roller coasters and they still scared the crap out of me. I don't know. Um, so far so good. It looks like everything's doing fine. Let's just add some benches here uh, at the exits of our shuttle loops because they do increase nausea just a tad. Some uh, garbage cans and maybe we'll add some more food back here or something just so guests have a place to, um, you know, get something to eat so they're not constantly searching for meals. Again, I think we're doing okay. Maybe we'll add another bathroom too. You can never, uh... You know, as soon as you start getting... Oh, jeez, is that a watching animation? Oh, man, this person ain't feeling too good. Too much shuttle loop for you, sir. Yeah, he's about to hes about to blow chunks, man. Look at that face. He's not having a good time. <laughs> well, it's okay. Because thankfully, in this scenario, we're a benevolent god. We're not going to drown you because you don't feel good. Um... Which you can totally do. This is one of those games where you can actually drown your guests if you just create some water and you just drop them into it and they die. But let's hire another handyman to kind of maintain the uh, back side of the park here. Let's see, this guy... Oh, we don't have them on any footpad. That's, that would explain why they're doing their job very inefficiently. So handyman 2, we're going to have you do the kind of back end of this park here. And maybe that little piece right there. Yep. And we'll just do that piece. But that way, I'll have that end covered. And then Handyman 1, you will be responsible for the kind of the front end of the park here. I can't really go that way, but let's make sure this is all covered good. That nah, looks fine to me. If there's a nasty spot, we can always just click and drag them on there manually. That should be good enough for now. We haven't had need of a mechanic yet, so let's um, add some flair to our park. These colors need some help. So let's see here. Let's do something I'm like a, a monochromatic kind of guy. Let's do something like this. And then on this one, we can do sort of like inverted do white here and then red and keep the black posts it's looking kind of mean it's kind of cool and this right here let's start with black and then blue we'll just do like a weird inverted thing and do white red white yo Maybe it'd be better if it was the other way around. Let's let's try that. I think it would look better if it was uh, if it matched the scheme of the track. Each of these there's a bright red. There it is. There we go. Black, blue, black. Yo, I like that better. And then we can do something like that over here too. I don't think that adds anything to the excitement rating, recoloring your rides. It's more of like an aesthetic thing that you. Uh, that you can get done, you can prefer. Oh, and if you notice, while we're playing this game, there's a whole bunch of weeds popping up, and uh, I believe the design intention of the game was was to make it so that that's what you needed your handyman to mow the lawn for. But if you use this digging tool to change the elevation of the land, you can just click, and it will delete the weeds. Uh, it's, maybe that's an exploit, I don't know. I've, I've been doing that since I was a kid. Don't waste your time mowing the lawn. Uh, looks like we got a, bit, a little bit of puke back here, too. Let's see if uh, well, we forgot to take this guy off of empty, emptying or watering watering gardens. Let's see here. Where's your foot pad? Uh, we'll pick you up and drop you over here. Let you mop that up. Yeah, what are you getting? This is here. 
$50 a month, that's kind of like slave labor. So, you know what, I'm not going to complain. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's change it. You know what? No, I kind of, I kind of like how that is. That's fine. Maybe not the cars, though. It's like, a uh, pretzel and mustard, I guess. <laughs> let's see. I think you can change, can you change the color of the merry-go-round? Yes, you can. Let's have it match the slide over in the corner. That's, that's not lovely. And the scrambler. It's basic red. Let's go with black. You know, it's only 88 degrees on a sunny day. Let's have nice black seats to fry our guests. Same thing with this. This is now going to be named Torture Park. I think you can rename your park. Or the Park of Pain. Yeah, Forest Frontiers. That is like way too family friendly. There we go. I love it. And the Park of Pain will live up to its name when we Steeplechase. This is like honestly one of the worst roller coasters. This is like, it's almost like a detriment that it's in the game because I guess I can kind of show you. Um, well, I guess if you could see in the picture, this, this steeplechase, I think that's what it's called. It only holds one guest per car. So the amount of money it generates isn't like this giant chunk of like revenue that flows in. It's just like you only get the one guest that rides and then like another guest will launch and ride. It's just very slow to generate money in my experience. Um, haven't ever made a successful steeplechase and I didn't really care to because if I was making any other roller coaster, I, I would just use like the steel one, for example, and it would be just as intense and exciting and also give me a crap load of my money. And I believe they, uh, maybe it's a little bit less expensive per part. You know, they give you a cost estimation you can see there in the bottom right. But uh, at the same time, is it really worth it? You know, I'd, I'd much rather do the junior roller coaster than the steeplechase because, you, again, you get a lot more um, uh, people running through the roller coaster and generating money over time. Let's see how we're doing here with the scenario. I think there's a way to check the, the goal. Yeah, 250 guests in your park at the end of October, year one, with a park rating of 600. Right now, we're locked in at a solid 645 guests, and our park rating is, what, like 900? Oh, 8, 869, it looks like. So we're kind of crushing this this early campaign here, and largely because of the shuttle loop exploit going on. It's not really an exploit, but... The shuttle loops are just any any scenario where you start with the steel roller coaster or what is it called in this game? The looping roller coaster. Yeah, it's basically an easy scenario. Um, you just pull out it, even if you start with low money, you just pull out a loan from the bank, and as you can see, here, we've already generated way more than enough money to pay off our loan. So we're going to pay off our loan, so we. Uh, don't have to pay any of the interest on that loan, and now we're just generating solid revenue. We're in the black. We're doing good. We're going to be doing nothing but making money for the rest of forever. Unless something catastrophic were to happen in this part. <laughs> um, this, this marketing tab is quite interesting. This can help you in a pinch if you're looking to increase the number of guests in your park just before uh, the uh, scenario is about to end like the campaign is about to end and you need another like 100 guests in your park, you can just launch all these campaign ads and your park will flood full of guests. And uh, it's a great way to just like do that sort of thing. But I uh, haven't really found that necessary. Um, maybe I should have uh, taken advantage of that as a child, but uh, my pea brain could not understand what that was for and why I needed it. So we'll see if we'll need that later. Maybe we won't. Uh, our handyman are red. That's not cool. They're part of the pain park. Park of pain. We need to be in sweaty black clothing because it's now 90 degrees and sunny. Um, we'll tell you another handyman. It's looking kind of nasty over here. It's kind of grimy in that part. We got, we got a little bit of puke on the second half. Handyman too. You're not doing a very good job. Might have to throw you in the, uh, the shark tank later. 
I need to make a shark tank. But, uh, you know, and, and a lot of this, uh, the charm that comes from this game, yeah, from the, the retro-style graphics, is that you can do, you know, custom things with your pipe. Let's see if we have... We don't have any fountains, do we? Let's see. Oh, yeah, we do. So, you know, who doesn't like a nice little swinging ship that's next to water? It's totally on theme. We'll make it at ground level. Throw in some water here. Enter a selection sign. Okay, no. Don't know what that meant, but hey, look at that. Now we've got some water next to a swinging ship. And uh, we can add in some, some little water sprayers. I like these guys a lot. Oh, hey, look at that. It's super cool. Getting all the guests wet because it totally would be soaking these people waiting in line. But don't you worry about it. The guests love it. And that does increase the, I believe those these assets do increase the excitement rating of the rides that they're next to. And I believe that range is, uh, each ride has like a range of like five tiles coming away from it. Um, with these like thrill rides, uh, roller coasters, it's uh, basically it has to be around the track uh, that it extends. So, yeah. What are we at? August, year one. Well, we got, I think, two months left. October, you know, if I know how to do my month math correctly. Let's see here. Let's say, yeah, October, year one. So, you know, let's, uh, looks like we're making some money. Let's get to work on building our own roller coaster as a way to wrap up this scenario here. Let's see. Let's go with, uh, let's go with a nice wood roller coaster. These ones are interesting. Let's go with a custom design. And uh, a novice mistake I would always make as a child is starting the station right here. And that way there would be no way for your roller coaster to end. You couldn't have the track loop back around in the rear end of your station. So we're not going to make that mistake. We're smarter now. Let's, uh, let's put this guy in. Let's just start about... Uh, how about... You know what's really interesting too is you can. Is there a way to. I don't know. Maybe there's a way you can manually do this again. I'll have to look in the UI. But what I like to do. Oh, Marigold 1 hasn't been fixed. We need a handyman now. Oh no. Here you go, handyman. March your way over to the Marigold. Oh, jeez, that thing is hauling. Oh my god. Now that's a merry-go-round I'd love to be on. What's the excitement rating of that? Oh, it's just, I mean, it's only like 1.45. Its intensity rating is still very low. Thankfully, these guests are, are very used to uh, being, I mean, on the uh, the Park of Pain merry-go-round. Oh, it looks like he fixed it. It's back to its boring old state. You know, I wish it actually changed the excitement, intensity, and nausea rating for the people that were on there. Maybe they'd be asking a little bit too much, though, from a very... I want to say primitive game, but a very early game. <laughs> Let's see here. Good God, that was uh, that was pretty. Uh, I forgot that they could do that. I thought they usually just stopped and slowed down. Where was I? We're building a wooden roller coaster, right? And here's something that I like to do: is I like to raise the land, and you start the station on the raised land. And that way, you don't have to have such a long wait for the uh, height. The chains, you know, the click, 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 get your roller coaster up and up and up. So we're gonna make this pretty big. It is more expensive to do it that way. It's a big station, as you can see. It costs like what, 80 per piece, 81 per piece to do that. Uh, oh, yeah, that was already a mistake. So I have not played this game in quite some time. And I think that's good. I think we've already we've already reached a height that is acceptable. Let's see if we can do something a wee bit fun here. Let's make a little roller coaster. Something that's uh, Kind of, kind of exciting, kind of thrilling for the eye too. You know what? Let's just go up a little bit more, flatten out, and we'll make a roller coaster that will have guests jumping for joy. Hopefully, at the end of the day. Uh, I 
we would have went up one more. That's a lot of trial and error in this game with building roller coasters specifically. We could slope down and then we could get right to ground level and we can shoot right back up. And we'll level off here. I'd like to level off. And we're gonna we're gonna do some roll banking, but we'll go the other direction here. And we'll do super wide roll banking here. And what that does is it makes it so that your roller coaster doesn't apply as much uh, horizontal G's on your guests and it makes it way less intense and nauseating and yada yada. It's much more comfortable for them and it's more exciting than intense looking. And just like any old wooden roller coaster, we'll go with some ups and downs and ups and downs and guests like that. You know, they like something that's got a lot of character to it. Just do a little bit of a flat, and then down again. And it looks like we're gonna run into this roller coaster. So, when we're up here, let's see. Okay, a little bit of speed, a lot of less speed. Let's go one more up, and a flat, and then we're at 45 here. It's from 60, we should have enough speed. Do a quick little S bend here. Other direction left. So move us over one tile so that we're not running into our shuttle loop here. I believe there's a way to put on the grid. Uh, jeez. Nope, that's not it. There's grid add. Well, anyway. Uh, yep, it will miss it just by one then. And let's dip down. Actually. Don't mind me as I zone out and uh, build a roller coaster here. These are always some fun pieces. I'd like to do. Is there an extra large here that's up? Up large. This takes so much focus. And then what I'd like to do is a little photo section here. Let's go down a little dip. Give guests an extra reason to spend some money at your park. And I, when I, you know, this is a very grid-based game. If you notice, these buttons here will kind of like put you on a diagonal. And while that is useful, and it gives you some pretty cool perspectives as rides um, follow the isometric view, um, it's kind of inefficient because it doesn't uh, pack in as nicely. But uh, it's definitely something to mess around with later for aesthetic reasons. Let's see here. Oh, we can't do that at all. Straight pissing off the Lorax right now with our destruction of trees. Now, if you noticed, a lot of the times I can and can't place assets is because I'm like 
running into the uh, roller coaster itself. But if you notice, all you need is a what ten foot difference between different assets in order to like be able to go underneath or over something. So because this is at twenty five and I'm at fifteen, I'm allowed to go underneath. But if it was twenty five and twenty, I would be running into the bottom of the roller coaster. So this looks like a fun guy. Let's just have it snake its way on back to the uh, station now. Do some roll banking just to make it more of a comfortable, smooth ride for our guests. A little bit too there. Let's see if we can turn a little bit over here and make it wide. Nope, that will not work. Oh, maybe. Ah, there we go. Like nice, wide, lazy turns. Let's head back to the station here. Maybe add in a little dip and a little rise before the end here. Guess not, that's illegal. And then now we'll do one of these. Should be able to fit it now. Yep, a little rise there, a little dip. We're good. Flatten. And then uh, add some chains to get up to 30. And then we'll see if we can just park this bad boy. So now, right now, we're running into our shed loop. Not really a problem. Um, I mean, it is a problem, but like, let's see, we could just like fix that real quick. Um, generally speaking, this roller coaster is going to be uh, kind of slowed down from the amount of distance it's gone on its track. So maybe we can get away with doing a sharp turn here. You really want to avoid these, to be honest. So maybe we should do something a lot more comfortable for our guests. And then with these last two pieces, last three pieces, we'll do um, the station. Get ourselves a uh, station platform. We give ourselves some more room for cars. And then you can just take this land tool, drop this sucker down. Don't need that anymore. So basically started out with a suspended roller coaster, which opens up more opportunities for foot pathing as well. And the moment of truth, you slap down an entrance and an exit. I don't really care where it's at. Um, that looks pretty cool. I think it'd be pretty cool if you had the entrance in the front here and walk all the way up to this monstrosity. And the exit dumps you off back somewhere down here. Let's give this puppy a test, shall we? And look at that. We're almost at our goal. We've almost completed the campaign. Hopefully this ride doesn't self-destruct. Ooh. Close. Close. It slows down, definitely. Oh my goodness. Yo. I think we said uh, I think we have ourselves a roller coaster here. Look at that. Some nice little curvy turns and everything. Nice little dip. Smile for the cameras. You guys are great. Would you look at that? Up and over the hill real quick. Some chains to wrap it around the end. You know what we can do to even make it a little bit faster? This is a little technique that I learned, is that you can increase the lift speed of the chains to seven mile per hour instead of seven. So let's give that another solid test here. Looks like we're doing good for our uh, park value. I'm sorry, park grading. We dipped a little bit because we've been dinking around with our custom ride here. But it kind of looks glorious. I like how it looks. And let's see. Yeah, that's right. Since we changed the chain speed, we have to wait for another complete circuit with the car in order for it to uh, register the correct test. And yeah, look at this. You know, when roller coasters loop around each other like that, they also give each other a little bit more excitement rating. So I'd imagine this shuttle loop has seen, hey, look at that, yeah, jumped up to 
It's pretty damn good. I like that. Let's see kind of what we got here with our test results. Let's see if we got a moneymaker or a dud here. It doesn't look too extreme. Looks like something I might ride. This end part being slow is a little interesting to me. Max speed 44 mile per hour. It's faster than the shuttle loop. Average speed is 18. Not terrible. Not terrible. Intensity rating's pretty high. Excitement rating's also up there. Now what you can do during these tests to figure out why it's so intense is you can really look at where the uh, vertical metal G's are on the test. And if a velocity, it's it's really the G's that you're looking out for. Is this car one here? Train one, yeah. And then we can follow this and basically see if it's ever too crazy. I think it's, uh, I forget which one, I'll have to test more, but you really don't want to go any more or anything crazier than that. Yeah, 1G is Earth gravity here. Yeah, I think it's these lateral Gs that you have to worry about throwing guests side to side in their cars. Not necessarily as fun. So let's see here. I think it's doing this car here. We're going up the chain, we're going up the chain. Yep, yep, yep. We go down the hill. Yeah, that may have been a little bit too hard of an S bend right there, but you know, not too crazy. I could watch this all day, figure out what, uh, what's making it very intense, but uh, it doesn't, it's not extreme. So because of that, we're gonna just continue forward with it and call that a victory. We made a roller coaster, it doesn't blow up, and would you look at that, we've completed our first scenario of Roller Coaster Tycoon. But uh, before we launch people to their deaths, we're gonna give people the enjoyment factor of actually riding our wooden roller coaster get out of my way. I know I'm a winner. Let's do it. Make this go down to the end. And get people an exit. We'll see if people ride it. Because that's the really exciting thing about this game is that you know, we design something and see if the guests like it. I can tell you right off the bat that this isn't the best roller coaster ever constructed, but it's not the worst by any means. And Let's see our excitement rating. We'll charge you six bucks to go onto the awesome roller coaster that it is. And we'll open it. Oh, looks like you're all broke and you don't have any money. But some people are loving it. Would you look at that? You know what? I just want to watch this go through its course one time. And, uh, you know, this being my first video, I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of uh, editing to do and mastering of the sound. Um, see if the levels are okay. I know some of the sound effects in this game can get kind of repetitive. Um, it could be a little bit much at times, but we'll see if it's okay. Yeah, it looked like they hit their heads right there. Jeez, didn't seem very uh, safe. It's the front car, I believe, it measures it from. So when it goes into that S bend, it really doesn't have time to slow down. I probably could have done that better, expanded it further this way. So this is this little piece right here is probably what's making it a, a little bit more intense. Um, as you can see, when this car goes down this hill, it'll bank around nice and smooth. It'll come down, but it doesn't have enough time for the front car to slow down before it kind of jacks the the riders left and right really hard on this s bend so if there was a spot that i had to edit for this roller coaster i'd imagine it's that little piece right there but other than that everything looks pretty nice and smooth it's not a particularly fast ride i think the average speed was all like 18 miles an hour but you know it does reach a top speed of 44. beautiful 
looks like you can pump it. And there's a nice little... I like to imagine myself in the park uh, as a guest that is just, you know, walking underneath this beast of a wooden machine, and uh, it's lovely, and I'm having a great time, even though I don't like roller coasters. So, in true victory fashion, uh, we're losing guests. Let's see if anyone's unhappy. We've already won this scenario. Looks like everyone's happy, hunky-dory and happy. Do we have any angry people in our park? No, everyone seems to be very satisfied. Let's see here. And I, I believe our park rating here is yeah, basically through the roof again. We got a park rating of 904. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess the only thing left to do is uh, let our guests transcend to the next plane of existence. We'll go and save this game. Ah, uh, jeez. I'll oh, save. Uh, can I just, like, hit save? Oh, I guess it auto-saves. Okay, whatever. That sounds good to me. As long as it unlocks the next scenario, and I guess we'll see once we uh, quit. Uh, if that's the case, but uh, you know what? If I need to revisit this campaign, I will do so in a separate time. Maybe show you guys the end park that I come up with. But uh, let us celebrate victory by launching these guests into the not too distant future. For those of you riding Shuttle Loop and Looping Roller Coaster 2, it's been a pleasure. Get out of my park. Oh, and they scatter all over the wooden roller coaster. Shuttle Loop 2 has crashed. Oh no, we've lost like 20 guests? Jeez. Not safe, not safe, not safe at all. And just like that, I break the sound in my game. And everyone is, is fleeing the park, is scared, and rightfully so. Oh, 16 people have died, just like that. What a malicious act. Who could have done such a thing? Oh. All you folks on Shuttle Loop 1 and Looping 1 are also... This is your last ride. <laughs> we are victorious. Look at that. We could have done that another, what? Jeez. 30 times and still been okay. And that's it, folks. That is the first campaign for you. I don't think there's any way to get this one to blow up, but uh, maybe. Maybe if I took out the chains or something. Anyway, so yeah, that is a Forest Frontiers, a first mission in the uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon campaign. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Uh, peace. Well, actually, let's see if it actually saved from the... Uh, the victory. Let's exit to the main menu. Save this before quitting. Well, sure, but it's like also really confusing. New file? What? Okay. Yeah, Forest Frontier, sure. And it looks like we unlocked Bumblebee Beach. Very good. Cool. And we did get the check mark for Forest Frontiers. Yep. Alright, so with that said, we'll see you guys in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you later probably get into something more creative next time. Until then, peace. <laughs>